during the examination uh, while a head-to-toe exam is certainly of uh, indicated focused examination should be on the gynecological exam rectal exam and neurological exam with the gynecological exam beginning on the outside with the vulva um, progressing to the vagina assessing the uterus or cuff if the uh, uterus is absent and the adnexa are crucial with the vulva looking for atrophy uh, changes in labial architecture rashes such as diaper rashes or discharge with the vagina uh, looking for wall integrity, atrophy, hysterectomy, tenderness, levator ani tenderness uh, will be of extreme significance. Certainly assessing the urethra at that time with masses, diverticulum, any scarring, tenderness uh, will be uh, of great concern for urinary incontinence. Looking at the uterus for size, tenderness, any uh, lesions on the cervix, any previous suture or graft from uh, past surgeries and the adnexa with a bimanual examination for masses, tenderness, whether they are fixed or mobile, whether the uterus sacrals are nodular will all contribute. In particular, looking at the urethra, it may be of value to specifically access mobility or in particular that of hypermobility. Most commonly, there are many tests performed, but the easiest to perform is that of the Q-tip test. Uh, with a prepped urethral meatus, a sterile Q-tip may be inserted into the bladder, and that Q-tip swab may be uh, placed in proximity to the urethrovesical junction. The patient is then asked to valsalva while in lithotomy position, and that Q-tip will be noted to move. If that Q-tip moves greater than 30 degrees, then we would say that the urethra is hypermobile, implying a weakened support. It does not necessarily imply that the patient is incontinent, although we tend to believe that with hypermobility and poor support, the patient is more likely to leak. In evaluating the vagina, Certainly, communicating the severity of support is going to be of extreme significance. <clears throat> While there is further per pearl cast available on specific uh, measurements and quantifications, probably the most uh, common three are that of calling it mild, moderate, or severe prolapse, using the halfway system, or more commonly the pop Q system. With mild, moderate, and severe, we basically look at the defect, or for a better term, eyeball it as mild, moderate, or severe support defect. For the halfway system, we generally turn our attention to the total vaginal length and try to determine how that vagina can fall inside out and we base that on a halfway scale. It falls halfway to the hymenal ring, to the hymenal ring, halfway past the hymenal ring or completely in everts. With the pop Q system it is a more detailed system involving staging. Um, this staging involves measurement of nine specific areas that will be described elsewhere in a pearl cast. Further support may be considered uh, akin to uh, perhaps a sailboat in the water. If this represents the boat, uh, this represents bone, the water itself would be uh, represented by the pelvic floor or levator ani. The boat would represent most likely the uterus. 
certainly when the boat is in dock and is tied to the pilings these ropes provide no support from keeping the boat from sinking but merely keep the boat from going out to harbor these ropes would be more akin to that of round ligaments while pelvic support would be provided more from fascia, connective tissue, and even that of the levator ani. Rectal examination, while typically thought of in an older patient, certainly may be indicated in a younger patient uh, as per symptoms or physical findings. Uh, assessment of scarring, anal skin tags, hemorrhoids, anal tone, anal sphincter, uh, levator ani, coccyx and rectal prolapse, and even that of rectocele and perineocele should be noted. Finally, neurological assessment. Is the patient in a wheelchair? What's her mental status? Does she walk? Can she sit? Can she stand? And concentration uh, to the pedendal nerve uh, from S234 will be a primary significance. Of note, uh, while we typically think of the gynecological and exam being performed in lithotomy position, consideration to examination in the sitting or standing position may be indicated and may in fact uh, better elicit uh, the patient's anatomical defect. In conjunction with this basic assessment, certain tests may be indicated, such as the cough stress test, your analysis, and a voiding diary. And finally, a post void residual. The cough stress test allows the patient to cough or valsalva and assess for the obvious visualization of leakage of urine. This is usually best performed when the bladder is full. Your analysis uh, certainly may be uh, indicative of urinary tract infection and may be again able to reveal reversible causes of urinary incontinence as per the mnemonic diapers with delirium dementia, diabetes or diet such as obesity, I for inflammation infection, A for atrophy such as vaginal atrophy, P for psychologic causes, P for pharmacologic causes, E for endocrine causes such as excessive urine output or excessive uh, oral intake, R for restricted mobility, or S for stool impaction. The voiding diary, which may be one to seven days, is actually a written diary of the patient's voiding habits. This may include urinary frequency, sense of urgency, how much does the patient void by collecting urine volume, does the patient get up at night with nocturia, what symptoms does she have, such as leaking, trouble initiating stream, and certainly needs to keep a record of what is being uh, uh, placed into the system from oral intake. Finally, post void residual urine, which uh, in its easiest uh, attempt to understanding is after the patient voids, there should be uh, uh, less than 50 cc's with a uh, abnormal between 50 to 200 being the gray zone and then greater than 200 being abnormal. Um, this may be checked with catheterization or bladder ultrasound. Finally, it should be recalled that the urogynecological examination should consist of a thorough history and general assessment. This would include the nature and duration of symptoms, previous surgeries, environmental issues, patient mobility, mental status, disease status, patient medications, but in particular patient goals and patient realistic expectations of what she expects from treatment and if indicated is the patient fit for surgery. Further evaluation should include the voiding diary and symptom score. A three to seven day diary 
and a validated assessment such as a quality of life score will be needed. A physical examination and while a complete head-to-toe exam is certainly merited, focused physical exam examination on the abdomen, pelvis, estrogen status, and sacral nerve will be uh, of utmost importance. A cough stress test, preferably with a full bladder, a urinalysis, uh, and possibly with a culture and sensitivity, uh, and finally the post void residual um, um, will provide complete examination and initiation of treatment therapy. It should be uh, noted that I would encourage you to read further on this topic and to consider more in-depth history and physical examination as indicated by the patient's symptoms, history, and physical findings. Thank you.